So it's no secret that I'm a gamer. I love video games. It's one of my favorite things to do. I use it as a way to relax, a pastime. Uh, helps me with my mental health because here's the thing. When I'm having a hard day at work or if I'm seeing stuff in the news, especially lately with all the crazy shit, there's nothing more that I want to do is hop, get on my couch, hop into a world that you know separates me from what's outside. And I think a lot of people do that. They use that as a way to cope with things. And that's what I chose uh, between movies and video games and stuff like that. Um, but the weird thing is, um, lately, um, you've been seeing for maybe the last decade a push for things like woke ideology, activism, propaganda, that basically caters to one certain group of people. Um, and the bad thing about it is they're pushing this stuff into video games and movies without no real good reason. Uh, a good example would be the recent Assassin's Creed game that's coming out that stars a black samurai named Yasuke, which they say was a real person. There's no debate that Yasuke was a real person, but it's highly debatable that he was an actual samurai. On top of that, they're making Yasuke a homosexual? which is still weird. I don't get it. Um, you never really heard that in Japan. I'm sure I'm sure it maybe existed, but I, I don't think so. And no, this is not an attack on the LGBTQ community. So call it with that. I know I see the comments coming, but I just want to say um, they're pushing a narrative on the new Assassin's Creed game, especially of a lot of other games where they race swap or they give them different genders and pronouns. All this stuff that's, you know, not really necessary. Sorry, I got a mean cat here, by the way. Um, she's not very happy. She doesn't like the fact that I'm talking about this. But uh, there's a new game that's coming out, which I, for day one, from the day one, whenever they first announced this game, I said this is going to be a gigantic flop. And it's actually a PlayStation exclusive. It's actually coming to PC2 called Concord. Now, Concord, what is it? It is a team-based hero shooter uh, with a colorful class of diverse characters, which if you take a look at the characters, they look really, really strange. Like, there's no... It wasn't made for me. And it's one of those games that screams, hey, I've got Guardian Gal Guardians of Galaxy at home. And let me go ahead and show you. We'll take a look at some of the gameplay for Concord. So this is Concord. It's basically, like I said, it's Overwatch. You can't, you can't tell me that it's not Overwatch because that's exactly Overwatch, but done poorly. Now, I played the beta, and, you know, here's the thing. Whenever I see a game and I think it looks bad, I think it's disingenuous for me to be like, hey, um, this is a bad game until I completely pay, pay, play it. But here's the thing, too. Like, I can make assumptions on the game. It's like predictions that this might suck. Or I see what they're doing here, especially with the characters and the message they're trying to push. Um, yeah, I had a good reason to believe this was going to be a failure. And that's pretty much what it's come to. Uh, when it came to the closed beta, there wasn't very many high numbers of people that was playing this game. Uh, mainly, I mean, you had some people that pre-ordered it. But it got to the point where Firewalk and PlayStation basically had to... <laughs> incentivize people to pre-order it by giving five extra keys to allow other people to play it without pre-ordering, which doesn't say a lot of good things about that. It just kind of makes me feel like they didn't have, um, they didn't think it was going to be a good game to begin with. They didn't uh, think it was going to take off. And I know there's a lot of people it did. And there is a lot of people, especially in, in uh, game journalism, that's trying to uh, spin this as, some kind of hate against DEI and woke ideology, which here's the thing, it kind of is. But my reasoning is for that is because, you know, me, whenever I play a video game personally, I don't play a video game to be talked down to or to have some kind of political propaganda message, especially stuff that is popular right now. And I'll show you why. Um, and right here, even Forbes, there's no spending how poorly Sony's Concord open beta was on Steam. So if you take a look at here, the game was $40. It peaked at 2,388 players on Thursday. And it's constantly went down ever since. 
ever since. So the beta just declined by day one. There's not a lot of people that thought this was going to be a good game because here's the thing. There's already games like this that are better, that are free, i.e. you take a look at Overwatch. You take a look at games like, what's well, the other Paladins. Pal people play Paladins. Uh, big hero shooters. And then you got one coming out from Marvel called Marvel Rivals and so on and so forth. Uh, PlayStation's been pushing this big thing when they wanted to do live service games. And my opinion on that is like, okay, we've already had some successful live service games in the market. Uh, one of their successes would have been Helldivers 2, which was also on PC. Kind of came out of nowhere. It's a little bit different compared to most live service games. And it didn't have any type of uh, propaganda or any type of ideals. Um, it was basically just not serious. It was poking fun of pretty much anything. Uh, <laughs> basically, you might want to say conservative or fascism or whatever. Um, it was kind of making fun of it, but I didn't really mind. It wasn't like, mm, you bad guy. It was just made fun of it the same way as the movie Starship Troopers, which it draws a lot from. Um, Concord, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why this survived when you had other live service games get canceled by Sony, especially The Last of Us. And you had this Last of Us Factions, I believe. There was a Spider-Verse game. There was a Twisted Metal. And that was probably a few more. But these got kicked out. Not not including games like uh, Foam Stars. And that was another one. Um, it was a... Twisted Metal, Fortnite. Man, what the fuck was that? I, I don't know what it was, but it fell miserably too. I think it was like Smash All-Stars or something like that. Super Smash. I don't know. Fuck that game. But here's the thing about live service games. One, there's only a, a number of hours in a day people have the game. If you take a look at live service games, especially recently, like the big uh, fall of Suicide Squad, um, what's happening is you're having the single player uh, companies that made mainly made single player games being pushed to chase a trend of live service games, which the live service in general, you get on every day, you have a list of things to do, you have to keep up with it or you're going to fall behind. And it's basically becomes a chore. Um, Destiny 2, good example. Uh, you can also take a look at Fortnite, one of the biggest live service games there is. But the big thing, again, we're going to move away from the whole fact that this was a live service as being one of its failures. But another failure was the fact that this game was not free to play. Um, and you're probably like, well, Hell Divers did really good and it was $40. Well, that's different. That's different. There wasn't really anything else like Hell Divers to begin with. And, you know, for me, I seen a lot of people saw it and I was hyped for it. Because uh, it looked different. It actually felt get different. I played a game. There was a lot of community there. There was a lot of people that was basically uh, <laughs> basically um, cosplaying and um, role-playing characters and factions. Uh, and it was very exciting. Very exciting. I played a whole lot of it. It was actually really fun. But this game is attacked is basically coming after a hero shooter market, which is already overly saturated. But the thing they should have done from the beginning, if they wanted this game to succeed and they wanted this Firewalk Studio to also stay alive, which I doubt they're going to be alive after this releases, and that is making the game free to play. Should have been that from the start. There's no reason why this game should not have been free to play. Adding things like maybe battle passes, uh, which that's fucking normal, pay for cosmetics. But no, you gave us a Overwatch clone with <laughs> DEI uh, Guardians of the Galaxy characters, which was basically Dollar Tree versions on top of that. The game's just not interesting. But when I take a look at that stuff too, another thing was actually popping out, and this is a big problem. And this was actually a uh, post by Smash JT. Give him a shout here. But we're talking about Fireworks Studios. The studio behind the impending Concord fl flop has serious internal issues. One of their devs, Lisa Brown, a.k.a. Wordle, came out as non-binary and forced everyone at the company to call her professor. She would regularly have meetings with CG, uh, cheesy phrases like, teaching, learning with a professor. She puts extreme politics, hated guns, and wanted un unvaxxed staff fired. Uh, this is basically one of the reasons why 
Concord is failing because they're more, you know, instead of talking about the game, they're too busy wanting to talk about the politics, the propaganda with it. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, there's nothing wrong with being non-binary, trans, or whatever. But you hear a lot about these people. They're wanting equality. They want to be accepted. But they expect to be put on some type of pedestal and having special treatment aimed towards them. Which, that's not how equality works. That's not. You don't say, hey, I want to be equal to you. I want to be accepted to you. And then turn around and say, hey, respect everything I do. Do everything I want you to do. Or I'm going to cancel you or have you fired. Which creates a huge HR nightmare, especially lately, when there's this big push for DEI. And there's a lot of employees right here. Just imagine being an employee. You're doing your job. You have no... No interest in politics or anything like that. And you have to work with somebody like that. And yet, if you do call it out as an employee, there's a good chance you're going to get fired, which is fucking stupid, right? Very stupid. Very stupid. And it always kind of made me think. It's like, well, you're asking for equality. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. But you're wanting us to worship you. You want us to bend over backwards to fit your uh, personality, your traits, your uh, ideologies, which that's not how, again, that's not how equality works. And you see this throughout the gaming industry, the entertainment industry, you see it in politics, you see it in just work in general, just in life, that these people say they want equality, but they want to be treated special, um, like the whole pronouns thing uh, i personally think the whole pronouns thing stupid i don't think it's i think it's dumb the whole gender ideology when you say there's more than one two genders i still think that's stupid i don't understand and the fact is the people that's saying these things don't understand either because we're constantly creating all new pronouns every single day all new genders every single day there's not a stop to it and if you misgender somebody or if you mispronounce somebody, they freak out. They go to social media, make a big deal. The next day, you're either doxxed, you're kicked from your job, or shunned to basically society. But I think a lot of people are waking up. There's a lot of people waking up, in my opinion. There's a lot of people saying, hey, enough is enough. Enough is enough. You don't want equality. You want to be worshipped. And that's a di that's two different things. That's two way two different things. Um, you can't ask for equality and ask me to basically wait on you. You know, right at your at your feet. I can't even fucking talk because I'm so like I, I get nervous when I talk about this stuff. So I know there's gonna be somebody who's like I can't even talk. Um, you can't expect people to bow to you, then ask for equality. That's basically what I'm trying to get at. Never really good at getting my words out because I stutter a lot. And I'm uh, generally a, I just stutter a lot. And some of this stuff is just makes me mad, especially when I get excited about it. Um, but like I said, you can't, you can't just say you want equality and expect people to put you on a pedestal and, you know, disregard their own beliefs and, push you at the forefront doesn't make a lot of sense and that's the way things are working uh, you guys know of cancel culture you've seen it it's been going on for years especially if you take a look people that's on the left they've been canceling people that makes the wrong you know if they say they voted for trump these people lose their jobs um one of the guys from uh i think it was id worked with john carmack he lost his job whenever he went to with the uh, Oculus stuff because he voted for Trump or he donated to Trump. He lost his job. And a lot of people did. And that's sad. It's really sad. You shouldn't be fired because of your political beliefs unless you're actually spreading some kind of online hate or harassment in the streets like being an actual Nazi, which I go and tell you now, not conservatives are not Nazis. Just because they believe differently than you doesn't mean... They're Nazis, and the weird thing about it is the same people spouting this stuff, especially the Free Palestine movement, 
they're openly hating Jews, but they're calling conservatives Nazis because they think it's stupid. And it's a really, really backwards way to think. Honestly, I think it's really backwards because I don't get it. And some of these people deny the Holocaust happened, and I don't get that either. But for some odd reason, these people have still have jobs, especially when they're openly hating white people and men, uh, downplaying them or white people as a whole. And somehow that's not racism. But when you take a look at the definition of racism, it doesn't say a specific group of people. It's basically discrimination when it comes to culture and the color of your skin. There's no exceptions. It's not racism is only towards everybody except for white people. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense at all. And like I said, I pointed out this will be an HR nightmare, especially for Firewalk. And this is probably one of the reasons why a lot of these studios are closing is the fact that a lot of people see these games, especially if they're tied to uh, um, <laughs> consultation services like Sweet Baby and Hit Detection. People see this and they're like, okay, so this is going to be a DEI woke piece of crap game that's too busy pushing ideologies instead of putting an actual good game out. And people see that. And people will see these games flopping. They flop hardcore. Just, again, take a look at the numbers for Concord. Then you take a look at Flintlock, which just came out, which was a sweet baby mess. Then you take a look at Suicide Squad. You name it. There's a lot of them. But there's a lot of actual change in the industry. Microsoft just basically let go their whole DEI division, which that may say something. They might be in pre preparation for... Uh, the Trump red wave takeover, which I think that's going to happen. Um, and, you know, basically what that administration said, hey, we're going to get rid of those programs because it's not fair. We're, we're not doing it anymore. Um, it's just so weird to me. And I know I've kind of gave, given this a big mess, but, you know, I don't think I don't think this belongs in the workplace. That's just me. Uh, diversity is, for the most part, natural it should be that way. We shouldn't be hiring people based on, you know, gender preferences or the color of their skin. I think that's wrong. You should be hiring the person that's most capable for the job. That's how I see it. You shouldn't be canceled just because you think differently. It's fucking stupid. Very stupid. Very selfish. Um, that's all I have to really say about it. I'll talk to you guys later.